something I've talked a lot about on not only this channel, but just in general in uh, everyday life is, uh, you know, how much I like commercials. You've seen me do specials on Nostalgia Critic talking about commercials. I think the idea of taking something that is so not creative, you know, kind of like just selling something to you, hey, buy this product and that's it. And making it so creative and so imaginative, I think is really, really cool. And I love how sometimes you forget you're watching a commercial for something. And what's often lumped in there for me as well, maybe even sometimes even more than what I enjoy about commercials, is what I enjoy about trailers, movie trailers. I was one of those strange kids that loved watching trailers before a movie because I never knew what was coming, what was going to be the new hot thing to watch. And there is a great art to editing a trailer. How long are the edits? How short are the edits? The kind of music you put in? How much can you get an audience hyped up? Do you surprise the audience? What do you do for a teaser? How much do you show in a teaser? There is so much that goes into it. And I found out, uh, you know, years later, honestly through YouTube, that a lot of our people get excited for trailers too. YouTube kind of showed there's a whole audience out there that will just watch a trailer over and over and over. And I was, slash, still kind of am one of those people. There's still great trailers to terrible films, and vice versa. There's, you know, bad trailers to really good films. Pixar has a lot of bad trailers for really good films. And at the same time, I feel like we're losing something when we went more to YouTube in terms of watching our trailers. And I feel like what's really missing, and some people say just in terms of streaming and seeing movies in general, you're missing that communal aspect of experiencing something together. Now that's not to say you can't do reaction videos and stuff like that, there totally are reactions and people will pause it and give the reactions and everything, but it's very, very different from how it is when you first see a trailer on the big screen. I know it's gonna sound weird, but some of my favorite memories of being in a movie theater is just the experience of seeing a trailer with a group of people for a first time. Like I said, there's some movies that have really good trailers, but not the best movies. And the reason they're so let down by them half the time is because the trailer was so good. And something that we can't really get right now by watching these on YouTube is the surprise trailer, the one that kind of tricks you. And one of my favorite trailers I've ever seen, uh, I can just remember being so excited for this, even though the movie was awful, was the Super Mario Brothers movie back in 1993. When we first saw that trailer, we didn't know what it was at first. It looked like some sort of like Batman 89 style film. It looked intense, it looked dark, it looked gritty, and it created this whole crazy new world. And then as soon as they say, the plumbers took it, Des Hopper goes, plumbers. The plumbers took it. Plumbers. In that weird accent he suddenly has for a second. And the title reveals in these bolted in letters, Super Mario Brothers. And you finally saw Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo in the red and green outfit. I mean, people lost their minds when they saw that. It worked, it grabbed us just immediately. We were on board for what this bizarre interpretation of the material was. Cause we never saw really a video game movie up to that point. And we were ready for something this bizarre. Cause again, we thought well, this was gonna be like Michael Keaton as Batman. This is gonna be like, you know, just really dark and tough and everything. It was not that, <laughs> as you all know, it was, it was quite a bad movie. But that excitement and that community joining together of just being like, what the hell is this? But being so excited for it as well is something that you can certainly have a little bit on YouTube, but not in the same way with an audience. You can't really surprise people as well with a YouTube video uh, or a YouTube trailer because the title is right there. It tells you what it's gonna be. The teaser for Austin Powers 2 was really, really famous for a while because Phantom Menace was coming out around the same time and they made it look like it was a trailer for Star Wars The Phantom Menace and it fooled everybody. And that immediately got people excited and laughing and oh man, I gotta see that, they got us good. You can't do that on YouTube. It'll say, teaser for Austin Powers The Spy Who Shagged Me 
and it would immediately be ruined. Another good example, uh, what didn't even have a title at the time was uh, the Cloverfield trailer. Actually, the first Nostalgia Great video I did was on the Cloverfield trailer. Just talk about what is this? What did we just watch? And it was tricky to do because how do you say what it is when the movie didn't have the title? Because that was the catch. The trailer was released. It had this found footage style to it where the lights all go out and there's some sort of giant monster or something and there's an explosion and suddenly the head of the Statue of Liberty just falls on the street and that was it. They didn't give you a title and everyone was like, what was that? Well, well, like, even as the movie was starting, people were saying, well, what do you think that's going to be? What do you think that is? What do you think? Blah, blah, blah. And again, if you do that on YouTube, you can't really say unknown movie or untitled movie. That, that's just not exciting because you know you're not going to get the answer by the end. You're going to, and you're going to be like, well, it's going to try and do something. It's going to try and play some sort of trick on us. Another trailer for a film that it's not very good, but the trailer just got a huge reaction. I just loved this reaction. Uh, I was seeing Jurassic Park and everyone's so excited to see this movie and an ad starts for the Flintstones, the Flintstones movie. It's just this, you know, rock bouncing on the lyric, Flintstones, meet the Flintstones. Everybody thinks they already know what it's going to be. We had a Jetsons movie come out. It's going to be a cartoon, obviously. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a cute little kids movie, whatever. But then as soon as it cut to John Goodman catching that bouncing rock and shouting Yabba Dabba Doo, the audience erupted with laughter and confusion. Just, what? Because they know what that means. Like, wait, so you have to construct a whole bedrock? But you're going to do this with actual, like... Puppet dinosaurs or, or CG dinosaurs? Like, we haven't even seen the CG dinosaurs yet because we're about to see Jurassic Park. I mean, is this even possible? Who's going to play who? And it's just this fun excitement, this fun release of laughter when something like that happens. Not technically you can do on YouTube. You can say the Flintstones movie and not give away who's in it, but most of the time they do. They have the celebrity around there who's in it. You know, the Flintstones, John Goodman, Grant could still be animated, you know, kind of thing. It's still one of those things where you feel like you don't get as big a reaction as if when you're in a room full of people. Another one where I didn't know this movie was as big a deal until I saw the teaser with a crowd was The Dark Knight. Because I saw Batman Begins and I liked it. I didn't know there was such hype for the sequel until I saw that teaser where all it is, it's just the bat uh, symbol being lit up and some lines from the movie, a little bit of Batman talking, a little bit of the Joker talking. And as soon as people could make out that image, they could make out the bat symbol, just people roared with excitement. Whoa, whoa! I mean, just started like I never saw an audience just erupt like this before. And that was the clear sign to me. Holy smokes, like this, this is going to be a huge deal. I didn't know there was such a following from the last movie, even though I really liked the last movie. I didn't know it was this big. And so even through that, you can gauge how much excitement there is just from the common person, because I feel like if you go on a YouTube video, a trailer, and it, it, people can throw a lot of hate at it, they can throw a lot, a lot of love at it too, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do well or it's going to do badly. Uh, you know, it can just sort of capture a certain group of people that are either excited to really get on board with it or just really don't like the idea at all and just want to hate on it and stuff like that. Where I feel like before, you just kind of went with the vibe of the audience you were with and that it felt right. Again, it was just something I was shared with everybody just in that room. And it's fun talking about the audience reaction as opposed to how many upvotes did it get, how many downvotes did it get. Not to say that isn't interesting or shouldn't be talked about, uh, you know, when a trailer gets a ton of views or maybe when it gets a ton of downvotes and stuff, it is interesting to see why I'm not going to act like there's nothing to that. But like I said, because there's already an expectation of what you're about to see, it does suck out kind of what made it special. Uh, and it sucks out that communal feeling of like, okay, I'm in this group with these complete strangers. Like I might have a few friends with me or something like that, but most of the people in this room I do not know and we can all come together to enjoy something. And experience something for the first time, something we didn't know was going to be presented to us, you know, whatever, a Dark Knight movie, a Flintstone movie, a, a Super Mario Brothers Batman 89 style movie, you know, kind of thing. 
And with that said, I'm sure a lot of people have heard this before when they were releasing uh, Phantom Menace. They released it before a film called Meet Joe Black. And nobody wanted to see Meet Joe Black. Nobody had any interest in this movie. It didn't look awful. It just looked boring. But that was the only movie they were showing the teaser for Phantom Menace. So people would literally line up to see this movie watch the trailer, and almost as a joke, they would walk out immediately after. They'd be like, okay, got what we want, and then they would just leave in, you know, crowds. Like, the whole theater wasn't empty or anything, and honestly, I'm, I'm really curious what the people who just wanted to see the movie <laughs> were thinking. They see an ad for Star Wars, and then just all these people leave. They're like, wow, is the trailer that bad? <laughs> kind of thing. I've got one of was going through their head. Uh, no way for the actual movie to come out. They'll get that reaction. Eventually. <laughs> On the third or fourth viewing, people will say, hey, maybe this isn't that good. So there are these unique circumstances and these unique trailers that can get this unique reaction that we don't really have anymore and I do kind of miss. I feel like film in general is always going to have this communal connection where I definitely see why a lot of times it's more convenient to watch something at home especially if you have like a big tv with a good sound system and everything but you are going to miss that connection with other people with just the common person watching something. Trailers can definitely change when you see them on a big screen. I saw the trailer for Furiosa recently. It looks fine. Looks good. It didn't really think one way or another. I like the last Mad Max movie, so follow-up looks good. But as soon as I saw it on the big screen, that was different. That was a totally new experience. Titanic, the trailer for that, trailers are usually like, I don't know, a minute, a half to two minutes long, something like that. This was like four minutes. They knew that we have to make this the motion picture event of the year, as you know, everybody always calls their trailer, but they had to really, really mean it. So they took a lot of time and put a lot of effort into this trailer, which practically shows the whole film. I mean, that's how confident they were in this movie. It's like, we're just gonna show you almost everything and you're still gonna see it. You're gonna wanna see it because this is a big screen movie. And that trailer is unbelievable on the big screen. They showed it everywhere. And every time it started, there was kind of this excitement, like you were gonna watch a mini movie before the film starts. I mean, I feel like the best trailers really are kind of like mini movies, but there's a way to do it where you don't give away too much. Either a lot of people say they show too much in trailers, you know, fair enough. Titanic definitely does that, but it knew it's gonna rely on the spectacle. And that final shot in the trailer of just the ship going down and Jack and Rose, you know, writing it down, this is it, we're going, go, oh God, oh God, all that stuff is such an amazing moment that whenever I see it on whatever, on my phone or on TV or whatever, I still flash back to seeing that on the big screen, just that shot. And what's funny is that if you go to the trailer for it, you know, YouTube has those things where you can see spots that are watched over and over, which again is cool. I'm not gonna act like this isn't pretty cool. That scene's not watched over and over. Maybe like when the music starts picking up, it, you know, it'll sort of bump up there and they'll sort of stay that constant bit where the adrenaline gets going, which, you know, it's neat to see, but nobody rewatches that one bit because on the small screen, it's neat, but it's nothing like on the big screen. When it's on the big screen, you are riding that damn ship down and it is amazing to see. As soon as I saw that shot, I said, there's no way I can live in a world where I don't see this movie. I need to see the movie that has that shot. But I'm one of those people now that I don't show up that early to films now for a couple reasons. One, you can pick your own seats, which I love. I really love. I don't have to get to a movie early and look for seats and try to save seats. And like they are picked. You can get them as soon as you get the tickets online. And even when you order them uh, at the movie theater, man, I love that. But at the same time, it doesn't give me a reason to show up early. It doesn't give me a reason to sit down and watch the trailers or the advertisements, uh, unless I don't want to look for the seat in the dark, I guess. But the other reason is I've already seen these trailers. I've seen them on YouTube. And I do get in this mindset of, well, I already saw them there. How's it going to change on the big screen? Even though I know it's going to change on the big screen. I know it's going to be different, but... I'm telling myself, well, it's not worth that extra couple minutes. I could be getting some more work done, you know. I mean, again, trailers go so long before the film. I mean, they can be anywhere from, like, you know, 10 to even, like, 25 minutes, something like that, where I kind of go, eh, I, I can get there a little late. Let me finish this up, let me finish this up, where there was something really cool about you were almost required to watch these trailers, some you didn't even want to see, 
And you made the best of it somehow because I loved when a bad trailer would play and it would play a lot. And people would start to make fun of it. People would start to laugh at how lame it is. Or whenever it would start again, you'd hear everybody go, Ugh. you know, this moan of they're tired of seeing this trailer. And then people would kind of start to laugh through that. And then they knew, oh, everyone's on the same page here. Okay, we can just say whatever we want at the screen now. Everyone's on the same page. There's that fun communal element to seeing a movie and seeing a trailer that I feel like is slowly kind of being stripped away a little bit. And I feel like we're going to be missing something if we keep doing that. And I say all this as a person who is totally aware I'm also a little bit a part of the problem. I like giving my reaction to trailers, certainly, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I am definitely at the point where when I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see an advertisement for something, I'm doing this thing where I will watch kind of the quiet preview just on the little thumbnail before I even see if the trailer is worth it. Like, is this worth sound? Let me see. Let me skip ahead a little bit to see if it looks like there's anything of interest. And that is ridiculous. I totally acknowledge that's really dumb of me. I should just watch this and see what it has to offer, but it's kind of creating this environment where because there's a preview for the preview, you can skip it a little bit more easily, and it kind of depends on what the thumbnail is and will the thumbnail get your attention. And again, just will the preview will with no sound get your attention on a very, very tiny screen like that. And I totally acknowledge I'm part of the problem with that, but I'm also saying that's why I think the necessity of you have to sit down and wait for the movie to start, it's playing before something else, is kind of important. It can change your outlook on a film, which is not all to say there aren't times where you can see a trailer going really viral and seeing the different reactions to it. That's great. That's wonderful. But there is definitely that connection that's making with other people, or at least used to make with other people, that has changed and in some ways a little for the better, but not much. I feel like it's more for the worse. It is taking out that community reaction or at the very least changing it in a way where it feels less special. Now my thought personally, which nobody's gonna listen to and nobody's gonna change, but I still like putting this out there just as an option, would be that you still show trailers on the big screen and then maybe after the weekend the trailer is shown in theaters, then you release on YouTube, or honestly, release it the day the trailer drops on the big screen. I keep seeing trailers like on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays and stuff like that. Why not release it on a Friday? So that way, if somebody's just doesn't get a chance to see it before going to the movie, or heck, somebody's just like, I'm gonna see a movie today, I'm not gonna go on YouTube. I don't want anything ruined about what the coming attraction is gonna have or anything like that. That's an option, but again, I do feel like I'm part of a minority on that. I feel like kind of this connection that people have when watching trailers, that, not yet movies. I feel like people still, I, I know movies aren't always doing the best right now, but there are still things like, you know, like Barbenheimer and stuff like that where people like to go and experience something with the crowd. Let's all, a bunch of strangers enjoy something together, uh, whether it be scary, whether it be funny, whether it be bad, and we all just have a good time laughing at how bad it is. And I think people still are connected to that. I think people still like going to movies for that reason. But it is getting trickier with YouTube because while it is getting more attention and more people talking about it, the excitement I feel like does go down a little bit because you just can't get that same adrenaline as you do when you're watching something on the big screen for the first time with a group of strangers and everybody's on the same page. And that's just such a great feeling and a great reaction. And I love to see it come back. I don't know if it's going to. We might be, you know, kind of in the end days of this kind of stuff, which is not to say everybody watches YouTube trailers before they go see a movie and everything, but I think especially because you can pick your own seats now, which while convenient is kind of killing the big screen movie trailer. Uh, that is kind of an unfortunate thing, and I like to see it come back because it really is a cool, cool experience and has created, I know it sounds silly, but like a lot of fun memories watching a trailer on the big screen with a whole bunch of strangers and just having a good time. So 
I like to see that come back. Maybe it won't, but at the very least, there's some record here, and probably not just me, I'm sure others, but, you know, definitely records of people saying, hey, there was a time when people would watch these on the big screen and just really, really soak in the excitement and the surprise of whatever was coming, whether it was good or bad. We all had a reaction to it, and it was a fun reaction. We all kind of experienced it together. With that said, Am I totally off on this? Do you feel like YouTube is not killing trailers and has actually made trailers so much better and so much more convenient that you can check them out? Or do you feel like trailers are just so boring now, whether it's on the big screen, the small screen, it's just totally obliterated because either there's no good ideas anymore, they're just not advertising them, right? Uh, or are you somewhere in between where you feel like, yeah, some things have changed, but it's not that bad. I'm probably making too big a deal out of this and it's not worth it, but it's still a little interesting talking about, a little interesting. Interesting. Uh, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time. Take care.